At the University of Iowa, scientists in many fields use supercomputers for cutting edge research that can lead to breakthroughs. But what is the best way to provide this technology efficiently? The University of Iowa may have its answer with the recent installation of the largest supercomputer ever built on campus. We have a large number of world-renowned researchers and this kind of platform is becoming more and more integrated into every kind of science and even the non-science disciplines now. So it's important that we provide this platform so that they can move their research agendas along more quickly than would otherwise be possible. The project benefited from collaborating with peer institutions in the Big Ten's academic equivalent, the Committee on Institutional Cooperation. In the CIC, Purdue is a national leader and they were more than willing to share with us their best practices and the lessons they've learned in building community clusters. And that knowledge helped us get off the ground a lot faster than if we would have had to start from scratch. This community cluster is not just more powerful. Because it is shared, it will be utilized more, making it a more efficient computing resource. Helium is also energy efficient, an important consideration in Iowa's ongoing sustainability efforts. Instead of having a lot of clusters that are scattered across the campus and are often housed in places that don't have efficient electrical power and cooling needed, we can bring them together in one location in a place that does have an efficient delivery of power and efficient cooling. So the overall energy use is much lower. The research made possible by Helium addresses urgent scientific questions. Computational unit has begun to fail. The work that we do in our imaging lab directly impacts the research going on in the psychiatry department by allowing us to better understand how the neurology and the psychiatry go together to manifest itself in disease states. In vivo neural imaging is a very impressive technology. It allows us to get a three-dimensional or four-dimensional picture of the human brain in a non-invasive way. Those pictures, though, are huge. The amount of data that we collect on a single study is tremendous. A single computer would plug away at it for seven or eight years. We can't wait that long. The Helium supercomputer will allow Hans's lab to process and analyze their images much faster than was previously possible. It allows us to get better results and provide higher quality analysis for interpreting the disease states. At the College of Engineering, Professor H.S. Uday Kumar uses computational fluid dynamics to model complex physical processes inside the human body. You know, so for example, if you think about the formation of a blood clot in your body, and the, which results in strokes, you know, how can we understand clot formation? Uh, how, can we how can we predict it? Let's say we implant a device in, in a human being, for example, a heart valve, that very often leads to the formation of clots. If, if you want to predict how a particular heart valve will form a clot, we have to be able to describe not only the blood flow through that heart valve, we have to be able to describe what happens to a single cell as it's flowing through the blood, which means that we have to model that single cell in great detail. With helium, scientists like Uday will be able to refine their computational models more quickly. The hope is that if we are able to better model these phenomena that occur in the human body in greater detail and closer to reality, that we will be able to design better devices. Another project that will use the helium cluster also combines expertise from engineering and the health sciences. Ching Long Lin from the College of Engineering and Eric Hoffman of the College of Medicine are collaborating on a digital lung model to improve understanding of human lung function. It's a very complicated system of branching tree structures, uh, both the airway tree the arterial tree and the venous tree, and those have to interact and control, neural control of them have to interact appropriately. Because their lung model is so detailed, it's computationally challenging to simulate in three or four dimensions. First is uh, construction of geometry and mesh. 
because it's partly uh, scaled from trachea down to 23 or 28 generations of airway. And then we have to partition the whole geometry into several CPU cores. Then it's uh, high performance computation. Once we have a result, we have to do post processing and look at the physics. So there are three different uh, challenges. With a helium supercomputer, Ching Long can now run calculations in hours that previously would have taken weeks or months and accelerate the progress of their research. All of these tools, the predictive tools of Chin Long, are quantitative physiologic tools that we're developing or helping us better understand underlying disease with the hopes of finding some treatments. Helium will also be a valuable testing ground for scientists like Greg House, who studies the solar wind and turbulent plasmas in space. Greg's complex simulations require the most powerful supercomputers available, and helium allows him to develop and refine his work in advance. You know, when I do one of these large 50,000 processor simulations at Jaguar, you know, that one simulation was probably preceded by a hundred smaller simulations, just to make sure that before we invest that huge amount of computational resources into one particular run, we have all of the parameters just the way we want. While Helium was built primarily for research, it will also serve as an educational tool. Computers these days are now so powerful that there are really only a handful of people in the world that can effectively use some of the largest supercomputers in the world. So I think the Helium resource will play an outstanding role here at the University of Iowa in educating our graduate students and researchers in parallel computing. For a PhD student, learning medical imaging, 90% of what you do has to be failure, or you're not pushing the envelope hard enough. So you need those failures to occur quickly. Having the helium resource available to them allows them to learn more, they can produce more, and they can advance our field faster. One of the things we're interested That's in That's the really exciting part for me, is seeing that that new knowledge being created discovering new things in, in a, you know, from astrophysics to hydraulics to medical imaging, all of those things are important, and to see that new research is really exciting. And by measuring those Something like the helium cluster, where it's a shared resource, each of us can use it independently, but as we're using it independently, we're also communicating with each other, and we can use it to share ideas, share techniques, share solutions to our common problems. Mm -hmm.